two years, 50 episodes. Thank you so much for being one of our longtime listeners. If you want to take a more active role in supporting the show, you can always, of course, write in. We love to get fan mail from you. We love to answer your questions. Or you can head over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash shades and sketch. You can support the show for as little as $1, and we're giving you all kinds of goodies, exclusive content, exclusive episodes, episode art. It's all there for you. On to this week's episode. Oh, ho, 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 hello. I'm Sketch. And I'm Shades. And this is Geeking Geeking Out out with Shades Shades and and Sketch. Sketch. A holiday edition. A very special holiday edition. Happy holidays, longtime listeners. Happy Life Day. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Kwanzaa. Happy Festivus. For the rest of us. For the rest of us. Guys, it's the uh, it's the season of giving. It's the season of Yuletide and good times and and uh, gift giving. That's important. That one's important. Oh yes, for today. absolutely. Uh, so for, what what a treasure! What a treasure, guys. So for for this year's um, holiday special, shall we call it? Uh, is we third are holiday special. Is it? Yeah, I think it is. Maybe our second. I think it's our third. Third. Yeah. Wow. Um, Time flies. We are celebrating the season together. We're 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 eating out. Yeah, just have a nice meal. I mean, uh, really, best poutine ever. Would you like well, another? Didn't like there a, a little bit. Sorry, another. Uh, would you like another scoop of chocolate mousse? Oh, I I would relish. You look like you can go Some for the horn. Mousse. Yeah. Oh yeah. Give it to me. Yeah. This is uh. This is. There's not many of these, but it's a Canadian themed restaurant. And uh, I it think is, yes. the closest one for you would be in Clamp Tower. Probably, yeah, yes. Clamp Tower, right New, in the, New York. New York, New yeah. York. Clamp Tower. Um, um, building of the future. Oh, yeah. I mean, the automation. It's flawless. Yes, that is That's the word. word I would that use. That is a word. That is a word. I don't know if it's the word, but it's a word. It's a word to use. Yeah, sure. So, guys, if we are in Clamp Tower in enjoying York, some yeah. chocolate mousse. New York City, New York. Yep. Circa 1990. Yep. That must mean we are talking for the holidays. Gremlins, the entire Gremlin cinematic universe. Yes, the GCU. All yes, all two, all two movies. Soon to be three. Yeah. So I don't know how I feel about that. If sketch. we're talking Gremlins, do we have a theme song? For oh, this I believe we do. Episode? Sketch. All right. Na 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 na. That's some, that's some bad that's, engineering on my part. Sketch. Perfect. That was, perfect timing, though. It was. It was the right thing to come in at the right time. Perfect. Oh, perfect. So, guys, Gremlins <laughs> for Christmas. Sketch. I mean, for the holidays, but I mean, yeah. Gremlins. The Gremlins, first Gremlins takes place during Christmas. Released in in June. Was it? Along, it? Yes, Gremlins came out the same. It premiered alongside Ghostbusters. This was eighty four, right? Yeah, okay. they premiered the same weekend. Uh, Th- that's mind boggling to me that these two movies opened against each other. I did not know. I was shocked when I saw the opening credits that this was Steven Spielberg. Uh, St- Steven Spielberg, executive producer, and uh, Amlin Entertainment. Sure. But yeah. The fact that his name was on it. In the same way that it's on Goonies. Because the last time I saw this movie was so long ago that that meant nothing to me. Right. You know, so so to be watching it as an adult now and to be like, Steven Spielberg had something to do with Gremlins? Okay. Say what? I guess. But sure. So guys, we are going to spoil um, everything Gremlins. Oh yeah, big uh, time. Gift giving, uh, visiting New York for the holidays, uh, entrepreneurial, bigger than life. New Yorkers, you know, a little bit of everything you'd expect from this time of year. Yeah. yeah. I hope I get a bathroom, buddy. Okay. <laughs> well, guys, guys, <laughs> we will get there. Oh. Um, did you, okay, just side note, did you hear, it was a throwaway line in Gremlins 2, but one of the things his father was inventing back home, reversible toilet paper. Yes, I caught it. That is disgusting. It's Yeah. It is. I mean, it's, if you can make it work, it's helpful. And it would reduce a lot of waste. But. I can't imagine how I that would work. I can't figure out a way can't that would work. Can't figure it out. 
guys, if you can figure out how reversible right into the show. No, I was going to say, leave that shit to yourself because I do not want (laughs) diagrams and stuff being sent. Send that to Sketch's door. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. This, I'm starting to think people season. just don't know where I live because I'm still waiting on my sequest. Entirely the possible. Blueprint. The holiday season. It is. Perfect time to get well, it. Well, I mean, you've got our physical GoCo Oh, that's true. Address. We do you have a physical GoCo address the, the GoCo address. Uh, Sketch, what's your, what's your history with Gremlins? Okay, my history with Gremlins is um, I saw it. I don't know when. I don't know how young I was. But I saw it. And some... Some things that I remember, I'll talk about later in some okay rants and raves. But um, I saw it before I could even assign a, a date to the memory. So sometime in my young young childhood, I saw it. Cool. Never saw it again. Really? So then, so then okay. like you know, you know, I was aware of of Gremlins references and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I just never saw it again until uh, we, you know. We we put the old noggins together and decided what to uh, what to tackle for the holiday for our season. holiday episode this year. Yeah, and uh, glad we did. Glad we chose Gremlins. Oh yeah, definitely worth a uh, a revisit. Yeah, I'll agree with that. And this is this is the thirty fifth anniversary. Thirty fifth anniversary. Yeah, blows so I guess away. June was the thirty fifth. Blows you away. It really does. Uh, Sketch. We're old. That's where Gremlins one, of course. Yes, Gremlins Gremlins two. The new batch was nineteen ninety. Right. It feels very 1990. It does. Watch it. And, um, you know, I always I always had this idea that maybe I only saw one of them and not both because I didn't have many clear memories of it. Sure. But you remember I texted you after yes. I watched the first one like, and I was I like, yes, I've seen it. There's a scene I'm missing. It must be in two. What I was that scene? It doesn't exist. It wasn't in two either. Wait, what? Yeah. I have this I'm really clear confused. memory of someone being terrorized by gremlins and... But they're like in a carnival, and and oh, whacking that them might be, with a mallet. That might be critters. Maybe it's critters. Do you ever see critters? Maybe. If that if there's a scene where they're whacking them with a mallet, like in a whack a mole machine, that might be critters. critters. It would make sense that it would probably be aired around the same time as Gremlins, and so I probably like watched it all in a big, in a big block. Yeah. There was a clear point in watching both of these movies where nothing felt familiar at all until. A scene and then i was like oh, oh i i yeah. remember this um in both movies that happened so i definitely saw them can't tell you when <laughs> um and i'll talk i'll talk more about it later with rants and rice and is, that, I, is that a fond memory what the mallet one or just gremlins um did you remember them with any kind of affection? Like no. when you're rewatching, and you're like, oh, no, yes. no, no affection, but also, but no, no disgust. Okay, just an experience. Just an experience. Just an experience. I like that. Yeah, that was it. Jades, what about you? Um, I saw the first movie very early in, in life. theaters. Not in theaters. You were. Um... Uh, I was. I would have been. Not quite born. Seven months old. Okay, seven months old. Um, really? Yeah. Your grandma didn't take you to that one. She didn't? No. Wow. You know. Okay. Drop the ball, grandma. Uh-huh. Graham dropped the ball on that one. So um, you saw it young. I saw it very... So I, I have an older cousin, mm-hmm. Josh, who is 10 years older than me, maybe? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That sounds about right. Sure. Eight years older than me. Mm-hmm. And just loved horror movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just... Delighted them. Well, sci-fi in general, mm-hmm. fantasy, mm-hmm. but uh, particularly horror, horror movies. And uh, he he was like my older cousin that funny as hell, too cool. Yeah. And just, you know, delighted going to to his house and, and video games and action figures. And Is this the same cousin that um, introduced you to Nin- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the comic book? Um. That was my uncle. Oh, that was uncle. my uncle that introduced me to the comic book. This would be my cousin who introduced me to Transformers. Okay. Okay. Um, he had all the Transformers. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember him loving this movie, and and it must have been like a very early VHS, I would mm-hmm. imagine, or maybe they had... No, I don't think HBO was out yet, was it? No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't know. But I, I have very early movie memories of this movie and just thinking Gizmo was awesome mm-hmm. and the other Gremlins were fucking terrifying. Mm. And and just being absolutely terrified of the other Gremlins. Yeah. I could still get um, behind that. 
Yeah, the 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 gremlins. Uh, one note that I made about the gremlins is that they are appropriately terrifying and uh, delightful. Mm-hmm. Equally, I can get behind that equally. Yeah, and I'll uh, that statement. his thing was that Gizmo looked like Yoda. Yeah, very much. It was so. basically like a furry Yoda. A, a, yeah, furry, a young furry, a young Yoda. furry Yoda. Yeah. Um. So I have very early memories of this movie and just you know being terrorized by it and my and my cousin torturing it me with it you mm-hmm. know uh, it was in in line with friday the 13th and nightmare on elm street movies yeah that we we watched this at some point and it scarred me and so when i kicked it on i was like oh that yeah that uh, that gave me nightmares for a very long yeah. time um uh, spike was it spike the the mohawked one stripe stripe, stripe. Oh, stripe. i have very clear memories of nightmares that i used to have about stripe great yeah Great. Um, We're going to unpack those guys. Sure. This is going to be a Shades therapy session. This is this is what Christmas is all about. It is. Un- unpacking your friend's deep-rooted emotional trauma. And uh, I guess I've seen it on television a bunch of times since then. I, I don't think I ever saw any of, like, one or two all the way through mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. When I watched the first movie, it, when you said, like, oh, there's this scene that I remember, and I, I must have seen two because it's not in the first one, and I texted you Rambo. Yeah. Because I have a very clear memory mm-hmm. from early in life of of Gizmo, yeah, going like watching mm-hmm. um, Rambo three, mm-hmm. where he you know Rambo three is just like the epitome of ridiculous eighties action movies. Mm-hmm. He has exploding arrows that he fires from a compound recurve bow, much like Gizmo, much like Gizmo fashions for himself, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I, th- I think it was like Stripe Two, whatever they call him, in like the Mohawked One in Two. Yeah, I don't know what they. I don't know if they even call him. Anything. It's basically supposed to be Stripe Reborn. Oh like, yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Um, and I have a clear memory of that being in the first movie. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's in Two. So clearly, I saw the second movie at some point. Yeah. I, I don't know when that was, and I I didn't remember much about that movie. So I well, would you imagine said it was Rambo on to in... me, and I was like, what? Uh, yeah, it's I don't even know. So I was like, I've ever seen a Rambo movie? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, okay. I knew what you meant when you right. said Rambo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, but in regards in, to right, Gremlins, yeah, yeah. I was like, huh? And then when I queued up two and he's watching it, I was like, oh, this is going to be Chekhov's Rambo. And he's yes. going to be Rambo at the end. And then when <laughs> I saw Rambo. him as Rambo. That's a t shirt. Yeah, Chekhov's Rambo. That is a t shirt. And then when I saw him as Rambo, it was <laughs> kind of coming back a little bit. Oh, you know? man. Si- very similar. I think we found our episode art for this one. Maybe. <laughs> um, very similar. To Beetlejuice in that like very little recognition on the beginning parts of either of these two movies. Yeah. Obviously the staying power is when the gremlins show up. My note for the beginning of Gremlins is that it's like it opens like a 1930s crime noir with the dad narrating. Oh yeah. And like the clearly reused set from like Big Trouble in Little China yeah. or 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 maybe even Temple had Temple of Doom come out at that point? 81, right? Yes. Yeah, so or 82 yeah, in, in between Star Wars movies. My first note so was 80? two nuns in a rickshaw. Yeah. <laughs> that could be the episode art. So I mean it's it starts, it's so it's so clearly like Big Trouble Little China, Temple of Doom, and those were both movies like modeled on 1930s mm-hmm. crime noir stories. Mm-hmm. And it just it was so bizarre. It was very it was bizarre. So open. bizarre with the dad narrating because it was such an interesting choice because it was supposed to be a horror movie. Mm-hmm. And obviously the dad survives uh, yeah. because he's telling the story after the fact. And and not only that, he's he's our narrator telling the story. He wasn't there for the He wasn't for, there, he wasn't for, there the, for the events. The, for the events of the story. No. Nope. Um, it's such an interesting choice. Yeah. It's such a bizarre choice. It is a lot of bizarre choices in oh. these two movies. And guys, I usually say we're gonna get there. For the holiday season, I'm going to say, we're going to unwrap them. <laughs> we're going to unwrap them. Uh, do you, do you want to do a synopsis? Do you want to do the history? How do we usually do this? Uh, history. History first. History. Okay. <clears throat> Gremlins. Gremlins. Was produced at a time when combining horror and comedy had become increasingly popular. Mm-hmm. 1984, it premieres, as I said, against Ghostbusters. They open the same weekend. And it's a, a 1980s humorous take on the gremlin concept. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the gremlin concept? I am. Okay. Um, So gremlins go back to World War II. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And it was RAF pilots and mechanics trying to explain all of the mechanical failures that would go go wrong with their their Spitfires. Uh Um, A very maneuverable plane, but a plane built from parts that were, for the most part, lying around. Uh So uh, prone to... Uh, frequent mechanical errors, and they would, just, you know, they would talk about gremlins. Yep. You know, just a way to like a fanciful way to talk about the terror of being in a flying coffin. Goblins are an ancient uh, token of folklore mm. that have been around for eons, millennia, and let's say. ages throughout multiple different cultures. Yeah, gremlins are a, a very new addition yes. to folklore in that they are, by definition, um tied to technology yes they they, they exist to, to cause havoc in in technology right uh machines and you could even say these days com- computers um so it's so neat it's so neat yeah. and, and i really i'm gonna get there but uh pretty faithful in the first movie like a faithful depiction of oh, like yeah. the idea of a gremlin very much and, and the depiction very as much. we would understand them in lore so and, and it also kind of makes sense because the the guy that you meet that's like talking about the foreigners and everything anti foreign <laughs> anti foreign I was like okay well I get why the name Gremlin comes from him because he is of that era yeah he's a World War II vet yeah so talking it, it, about all these like foreign cars it foreign lined machines, up to me. Yep. and it, like what his he has this what the uh, American Harvester tractor that's a yeah. old reliable tractor mm-hmm. that the Gremlins do eventually they get can, in because it's anything tech anything tech anything tech anything mechanical. Uh, yeah, I thought that was, you're, you hit it. It was like such a, in the first movie in particular, mm-hmm. such a poignant depiction of that mm-hmm. specific, specificity yes. of of the gremlin. Mm-hmm. Uh, where do we go from there? Uh, so in 1943, uh, Roald Dahl wrote a book called Gremlins, in which uh, it's, you know, along the lines of all of his stories, mm-hmm. kind of like a, you know, a dark twist on a, on a fairy tale. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other big point of reference, uh, specifically, uh, that comes to be parodied repeatedly over and over and barred upon is a, uh, Mary Melody's Looney Tunes cartoon where Bugs Bunny is on a World War II flying fortress and encounters a gremlin. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the episode is called Falling Hair. Well, I get it. Um, do you get it? Yes. Guys? Yeah. yeah. Did everybody, everybody get that one? Doesn't work great in podcasts. That's a spelling pun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But we got it. We got it. And that particular idea of the gremlin in the, you know, Twilight Zone does it. Star Mm -hmm. Trek does it. It gets used over and over in the gremlin in the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Uh, Where do we go from there? This movie in particular came from writer Chris Columbus. My favorite, Your favorite my writer. favorite writer, director, mm-hmm. Chris Columbus. Uh, I texted you, if, if Joe Johnson is my favorite writer, director, mm-hmm. Chris, Chris Columbus. Columbus is my least favorite. Yep. I I can almost, I, I said this, I, Elise and I were watching this and I turned to her within 10 minutes of the movie. I was like, I bet Chris, this is a Chris Columbus movie before I had done any research. And lo and behold. It was. It was. Uh, Chris Columbus power writer of the 80s, frequent collaborator with um, Steven Spielberg, based this concept uh, at be- late late at night or early in the morning in bed in his loft, mm-hmm. and he would hear mice in the wall. Mm-hmm. What he describes as a, quote, platoon of mice Ooh. in the walls, causing havoc and wreaking mischief. Sure. And that is where this particular concept, I guess that's maybe like, don't get them wet, don't expose them to sunlight. Don't feed them after midnight. Yeah, you're set of you're, rules. You're trying to sleep. Yep. Yep. So that that kind of makes sense. And uh, the the first one in particular is kind of a rousing success. The studio immediately wanted a sequel. Mm-hmm. Uh, director Joe Dante did not want to be a part of it. He and, and Chris Columbus does not write the sequel, Gremlins Two. Okay. Um, Joe Dante, family, you know, this was a standalone movie, has a very clear end. Mm. There's no point in doing a sequel. It yeah. is what it is. We told a story, we're in, we're out, people loved it. Let's not ruin it. Mm-hmm. How much do you think this movie cost? Mm. 48 bathroom buddies. 
Maybe. I don't know how much a bathroom buddy yeah. costs to make. Yeah. You stand on that? I'm going to stand on I'm that. I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. This movie cost $11 million That's to make. That's exactly how much. <laughs> 48 bathroom buddies or cost. 48 bathroom buddies cost. I nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. How much do you think it made, Sketch? I think it was a success. It was very much a success. Now, see, without me knowing, like, at all. I think it was very, like, I think it was a success. And I think it made three times that. Uh, I'm terrible at math, but uh, it made 153.1 million. And that's three times. Is it really? I don't know. I forget what you said. I'm going to give it to you. Perfect. 11 million. 48 bathroom buddies. Okay. I don't know yeah. if it's three The times. math is wrong. But the math is wrong. But the notion is right. It is stupidly successful. Yeah. That's a stupid amount of money to make on $11 million. Yeah. That is, I, I mean, when you think of it, that's like an animated computer, you know, cheaply done computer animation. I think that's what uh, Teen Titans go to the movies cost. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, great movie, by the way. A great movie, by the way. I think Beetlejuice was somewhere in there. Okay. Um, when you think of like the puppetry that went into this. Sure. And. Uh, Oh, and we're going to unwrap it. We're going to unwrap that. My my favorite Easter egg that I noticed, I'm, I'll be very interested. I want to ask you about it when, okay. when we're done with the, the history. Okay, okay. Um, and I didn't register at first until until we went back to it later in the movie. Now, now let me ask you this, because I'm I'm not of the... Um... I, I'm not of the vein of, of, of a horror aficionado. Sure. Is this a typical theme in horror, like a Christmas horror? Yes. It is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, very much so. Not so much with, like, the slasher mm -hmm. horror movies, but um, there's a whole string of, like, Christmas sleigh. Because Christmas one, of the things, one of the things I liked about it was the, the juxtaposition of horror in a small-town Christmas setting. Yeah. But if, if that's a typical theme, then I can't I don't know if it in a small-town Christmas setting mm -hmm. is the thing, but certainly a horror movie set at a holiday. Yeah. Uh, I liked that about it. I didn't write it down as a rave, yeah. but I liked that. I think it worked particularly well in this. Yeah, uh, it did. But I don't. Yeah, I. I would. It's not uncommon. Let's say. Okay. I don't know if it's the norm, but yeah. it's. It certainly happened in yeah. other properties. Okay. Gremlins two. Gremlins two. A new batch. The new batch. The yes. new batch. Nineteen ninety sequel. Um, parodies the sequel genre in general that had taken place. Uh, in Hollywood throughout the 80s and and subsequently would continue into the 90s. I'm so glad we're past um, our fascination with sequels and that we're just back into, <laughs> like, fresh content. So Warner Brothers immediately wanted a sequel. Yeah. And so they, successful. they asked, it was, yeah, it was stupidly successful. Mm -hmm. And they went to Joe Dante immediately, or like, start working on the sequel. He said no. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be a part of it. They went through multiple directors, multiple writers, um, and it went into production a couple times only for them to stop. Where in 1988-89, they went back to Joe Dante and said, look, apparently you're the only guy that can do this. What's it going to take for you to do a Gremlins sequel? And Joe Dante said, I need complete creative control wow. of this movie. And they gave it to him? And they gave it to him. Wow. And I feel like this has been Warner Brothers trauma since. Mm -hmm. I feel like Warner Brothers has never given complete creative control to anybody on anything ever again. Yeah. Burned them a little bit. Yeah. Um, that's a, a Justice League DC reference. Do you have listeners. the 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 financial numbers on, on oh Gremlins yes too. i do okay. i'm glad you asked sketch uh so this joe dante goes all in on this one mm -hmm. uh the virgin version that you watched was it intercut with looney tunes cuts? it wasn't intercut it was it was started with a looney looney tunes animation and it was ended with one but it it there weren't any in the middle. Okay, so I we started watching the same cut, and I instantly remembered seeing a version of this that was the theatrical cut of the movie. Uh -huh. And it has some, some minute differences that kind of created an immersive, interactive experience for people in the theater. Okay. And so... Well, I saw scenes I, like that, too. In the they, so they were changed for a home release. Okay. In the theater, there were other instances that would happen 
uh, particular are we thinking of like the VHS scene where the VHS okay, cuts so out? There's the VHS cuts out. Right. There's there's where the the film projector breaks down and there's gremlins in the in the booth. Yes. And there's Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So we did watch the same. Okay, movie. Yeah. That's the theat. Yes. <laughs> that's Hogan. the theatrical cut of the movie. Yeah. Yes. We watched the same one. The Hulk. Oh my God. Hulk Hogan. Sorry, folks. Yeah. I mean, like. But just imagine seeing that on a big screen. Oh, I know. Sh- it, I wrote that down for notes. People thought in early screenings, yeah. people were so into it. They were like, it took them a second yeah. that it was part of the film. Yeah. So that so we did watch the same version. I wrote that down on my notes too. Like, all right, this is a little silly right now, but I'm putting myself back in a theater yes, when this was out. And, exactly. And that had to have been so much fun. It's exactly. And so Joe Dante says, we've already done the ha- horror comedy. Yeah. Sequels abound. We are just going to have fun. Yeah. This is just going to be a fun. Another story in this universe that mm-hmm. does not take itself seriously. Mm-hmm. So this is, the first one's horror comedy. This is, I'm sick of dealing with studios. Mm-hmm. You want me to ruin Gremlins? Okay. This I'm is, gonna, there's no way we're going to recapture what we did. This is spoof horror. This is spoof horror at its height. Yes. And I think it's brilliant. Okay. I think it is so meta and so smart, mm-hmm. particularly the way he did it. Um, and there's one moment that stands out. And and you kind of hope that he does and does not do it. And when it happens, I was like, perfect. The Bat Gremlin. Oh, From the sure. time they create the Bat Gremlin, yeah. you know that there has to be a Batman reference yeah. at some point. And the way they and did it's it blatant. Was, it is blatant, it's in your face, and it's unapologetic, yep. and I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. I, I'm guessing what that was is that Batman Returns was announced. Oh, sure. And you almost knew Batman Returns wasn't going to be good because Michael Keaton didn't really want to do it. Mm-hmm. And Tim Burton didn't really want to do it. Mm-hmm. And so, like, nobody involved really wanted to be there. And I think you get that in Batman Returns. And uh, it was just, it's so unapologetic that this is horror comedy and uh, it not received as well. At one point, they, they, they reference the first movie they in do. the sequel of the second they movie. Do. They with, review the first movie. Which is almost a shot-for-shot shot actual review of the first movie. They actually got the film reviewer. That's excellent. So, and they had changed the set at this point, so they like... They revamped that set from 84. They got him back to give his same review. And then the gremlins attack him. Yes. It's so meta. Yeah. Did you ever see Attack of the Killer Tomatoes? Yeah. That's another one in the vein of like, yeah, I did. It's right there with it. Very long time Attack ago. of the Killer Tomatoes is like ridiculous horror comedy. But then a return of the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes has George Clooney in it. And it's it's right in this vein. Hmm. And it's it's annoyingly stupidly brilliant. You just made me remember that there's a cartoon. Yes, the attack, the cartoon is called Revenge of the Attack of, wait, Revenge of the Return of the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. It was, yeah. It there was, you go. Or something like that, because it's Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, Return of the, the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, and then Reve- Revenge of the Return, I think. Okay. I think. Right. And like, I'm not going to argue. They go back one. to the, the girl being a tomato. She like this tomato. When she gets wet, she turns back into a tomato or she, when she gets hot, she turns back into a tomato. Maybe. Or was that the car? The kid this that turns into the car? Symbolic. 80s puberty, cartoons. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Remember the, the um, hot, like, I can't remember the name of it, but like the, when you like put him in a hot, like he got overheated, he would turn into a sports car. No. You don't remember that? I that was, don't that was another that. 80s, like priceless 80s got cartoon. Hot? Yeah. Temperature wise? Like, temperature wise. Ridiculous. It is, isn't it? He would turn into a sports car. Sports car. That's ridiculous. It is. Okay, back to Gremlins. I think it was called Hot Rod, maybe. Yeah, that makes sense. And his name was Rod? Maybe, yeah. I hope it was, if you're setting it up that much. I hope so, much. too. Gre- uh, we, we digress. Gremlins 2. This is not the 80s. What do you mean par- we digress? Par- you're the par- one digressing par- all over genre. the place here. You threw in the cartoon. Okay, uh, so they give Joe Dante complete creative control. He refuses to give the studio updates. We get the movie that we get. How much do you think uh, the new batch cost to make? How much did the first one cost? $11 million. I'm going to say they gave him $25 million to make this one. Oof. Double it. Whoa, $50 million? They gave him $50 million okay. to make the new batch. How much did it make? How much did the first one make again? $153.1 million. 
This did not make that. It did not. I will say $75 million. Oof, You are a generous sketch. I'm going to give it to you, though. $41.5 wow. million. I would, have, that, I would have figured just that is a commercial a failure. Yeah. Did not make back its budget. That's a bummer. And it pretty much destroyed the Gremlins universe from Guys, that did point. did you know Christopher Lee was in this movie? Oh, that, I, have a, I have that note. Christopher Lee is priceless. Right there, Gremlins 2. Christopher Lee is priceless. Yeah. Did you know he's on screen with a baby elephant? <laughs> <laughs> um, the comedy of Legit him... Legit baby elephant. The, the comedy oh of him God. getting his diseases in the mail... <laughs> That was a well-written <laughs> comedy shtick, you know. It really, this is what I mean. Like, oh, is that what was what did he what was he hoping for? Uh, like Ebola, I think. Oh, is that my Ebola? Think, was that my Ebola? No, no, it's the flu. Oh, oh, I got the flu. I did want Ebola. Last week they gave me rabies. Like, come on, Christopher Lee. Oh my God, Count Dooku. Count present, Dooku. Presenting yes. Presenting those lines. Okay. Would you have imagined that Christopher Lee had a career after this movie? No. Me either. No. Like, particularly Star Wars. And I, I love that what? they I love that they put Christopher Lee in this movie, but not as the character that dresses up as Dracula. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like they're just making all of these things. They're making all of these yeah. these decisions. Christopher Lee as a deranged mad scientist, mm -hmm. like hellbent on creating a super germ. Yep. Oh my God. He and he is he goes all in. I mean, he chews some scenery. Yes, he does. In this movie. He commits. Oh my goodness! And the the two twin guys that are his like lab yeah, assistants. Yeah, I liked them. They were great. That was a great little reveal too. How's the genetic uh, cloning process coming along? And then his clone his pops clone up. Clone pops oh, up. We're making yeah. great progress. It was it was great. It was great. I'm I'm sketch. I'm gonna say something controversial here. Okay. Actually, I'm not. Okay. Nope. He's not gonna. I'm He's not checking gonna down everybody. Uh, you heard it. Syn do we do we need summary synopsis? We found the we, we found the uh, we I mean, found I think, the line. I think you you get it. Do we need a synopsis? Do you have one prepared? I don't. No, no we I don't can, need I, one. There, we'll there. Gremlins. Uh, the the universe begins with a, a father in search of the Christmas present for his son. Yep. Uh, he's taken to a otherworldly antique yep. kind of kitsch shop that is yep. run by uh, an elderly Asian gentleman. Yeah, a very uh, mystical. Yes, they use the the term "quote unquote" Oriental store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not politically correct today. They use that in Gremlins 2 as well. And they use well. it as, in Gremlins 2. It, Where business gets oriented. Yeah. Oof. And Oof. I was like, okay, dated term. Good good slogan for the day. Yes. Uh, the, the Dated term. A, a lot of... Didn't age. Neither of these movies aged particularly well, I thought. Uh, so the, the dad goes into the shop mm -hmm. and uh, settles on a, a new pet. A the mo Mogwai? A Mogwai. Mogwai. Or, or Mogwai. 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 Um... That's and he's yes, it's a, it is it is a burden to take care of the Malgua. Yes, uh, but the kid kid sells it anyway. The kid sells it anyway. They need the need the money. The yep. the the shop needs the money. Whatever the guy's name, Clamps gonna gonna close demolish. the demolish the building if mm -hmm. they don't pay the rent. They need the money. Yep. So he sells the Malgua. Yep. Uh, and brings it home to his son, who immediately disregards the rules. Uh, no, he was following the rules very well. Uh it was it he was got, he got Gizmo wet. Corey Feldman got him wet. Uh oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Corey, Corey Feldman was Corey the Feldman. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Corey Feldman got did Giz, you, Gizmo wet. Okay. Guys, right. did you know Corey Feldman was in this movie? There's three rules. It, very simple. One, don't get them wet. Don't get them wet. Two, don't put them in direct sunlight. Don't put them in direct sunlight. Three. Don't feed them after midnight. Don't feed them after midnight. Simple, simple, simple rules. Simple rules. And Billy, the son, following the rules very well. He is taking it very seriously. Okay. Corey Feldman comes in and Feldman's up the whole place. <laughs> he does Feldman up the whole thing. Gets Gizmo wet. Oh my god! Gizmo's the, the gr gremlin. Gremlin, yes. The, the name of Gizmo. And little little, little furry fur things come off. Basically, of him. tribbles yep. start shooting off of him. Yep. Turn into new gremlins. Yes, and they just start to uh, mucking up the place. Mucking they, up the place. Th that was the other thing. That that was the one thing. Why, like, why were gremlins? Why were Gizmo's offspring immediately mischievous? Yeah. They were already evil. Before That's one of my they big questions. Fed them after midnight. Do you want seems. me to ask my big no, question? No, we, we can hang on to it. Okay, we'll um, hang on. guys, we'll unwrap that one. Hilarity and hijinks can ensue, yep. as you imagine. More gremlins means more people interacting with them, means which means nobody knows or follows the rules. Yep. Eventually, they eat. Then they turn into turn like into demonic fanged, gremlins. Yeah, demo goblins. They turn into goblins. Yeah, they, they're dangerous. Yeah. 
and they have they will literally no regard for human it will life. Eat your face. Yep. They will literally eat your face. And in the first movie, they wreak havoc on a eat town. Your face. In the second movie, they wreak havoc on a on a building smart of the building uh, in New York City. Was well, not very smart. Building. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's the movie. You beat the grem. How do you beat the gremlins? Basically, you just shove them into the sun. Yeah. yeah. Or you get them super wet and alert and electrocute them. Yeah, you can do that too. That was not a rule. I that's didn't understand rule. that. You one. can electrocute them, like to kill them. I guess. I guess. I guess. And great. that's Gremlins. It's Gremlins. Merry Christmas, everybody. Woo! Our right. scores. Internet scores. All important. Gremlins. Internet scores. Oh, IMDb oh, oh. gives Gremlins a seven point three. Rotten okay. Tomatoes. Critic score eighty four percent. Fan score seventy eight percent. Google reviewers eighty six percent of Google reviewers like Gremlins. It's kind of low and, for Google. Yeah, it is. And I gave it a 70. Okay. I, my big issue with the first movie is that the, there are just, I mean, and I, sh- I should have gone back and written down their names. There are just iconic character actors mm-hmm. that are holding this movie up mm-hmm. throughout the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Billy, mm-hmm. I, I can't, I did not get the actor's name. Yeah, Billy. But uh, Billy, and and Phoebe Cates, who is like a uh, geek fan by Queen at this point, and that's that's Kate. Kate, yeah. They're they're both terrible. I mean, they are terrible mm-hmm. in this movie. Uh, Phoebe Cates a little less so than Billy, but maybe this was his first movie. I don't know, but he was painful to wow. watch. I, I really, fire. yeah, I really did not enjoy pew, him. Pew, pew. From what I understand, he was a horror actor, specifically in horror movies. Uh, that jives. Yeah. But, I mean, he was... That's what my wife looked up, because she was looking he, at people in this movie. He was really, mm-hmm. really... Are you getting into rants? White bread. Vanilla ice cream. Okay. Plain Jane. So who's holding it up? Dapper who's holding Dan. up the movie? Um, the Mr. Futtermeyer? Was that his name? Who the fuck is that? The old, the old vet? Oh, yeah. No, he was great. And, I'm glad uh, he didn't die. I'm also, they allude to the fact that he died. Oh, yeah. If this was a but one-off, then, he was dead. He was dead. Yeah. But they, I love that they brought him back in yep. the sequel. Spoilers, they brought him back in the yep. sequel. And then um, the, the, old lady. the old lady. The old lady was so fucking she, clutch. She was awesome. She was amazing. Yeah. I don't think the movie would have worked without her. She. Because there was no villain. She was. The gremlins weren't really villainous. They were just doing what they do. They, she was, I wrote it down in my notes, and without looking it up, I think I wrote it down, she's the perfect combination of Cruella de Vil. Yeah. Ebenezer Scrooge. Perfect. And I and I do remember thinking one other as well. Old Man Potter from It's a Wonderful Life. Sure. He owns the bank. Yeah. And they kind of allude to the fact that she owns the bank. Yeah. She has some kind of clout in town. Yeah. Um, oh, she was so she was so The bank had the same was, name as her. She was a great, horrible person. Yes. And when they kill her? Okay. You cheer. A little bit before they kill her. When they <laughs> when they uh flash to her house and she just has so many fucking cats, I was like, oh, of course of she has. Of course so she many has so many cats. fucking cats. Oh, that's perfect. That, it is. Um yeah, and then they kill her. And it was awesome. It was amazing. She had and a great I have, death. I had vivid memories. The whole basically from the time we started it, I I turned to me and was like, wait for it. Wait for it. At some point, they're gonna kill an old lady in a in a chair elevator. Yeah. And I it's um fucking amazing. The the point of the movie Does that make me a terrible person? Possibly, but it's funny. But it's not the only thing that makes you a terrible. It, it's person. true. That's fair. This is the holiday season, and I'm giving you <laughs> that that is not the only thing that makes you a horrible person. It's fair. Um it, 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 I just this morning I picked a fight with someone's deceased aunt. Yeah, you did. I did. I remember. I that. mean, I did. And it, does that make me a terrible person? Yes, yes. It does. But it's just one but of I'm many. Own it. It's a Going small to percentage. Own it. Small percentage of the reason. Small. Um, Minuscule. The the point in the movie where all of a sudden I started actually remembering the movie was when um, Stripe, that's his name? Yes. Stripe jumps Stripe. into the, the pool at uh, the YMCA. <laughs> then I was like, oh, this is coming back to me. Yeah. this is, And that's where everything goes to shit. Yeah. Too. It does. Yeah. Uh, Frank Welker voiced all of the evil gremlins. That's awesome. And, and uh, Howie Mandel voices Howie Gizmo. Mandel voices Gizmo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like some great voice actors, and um, also uh, uh, Michael Winslow, I think, mm-hmm. is also another 
a voice of, of a number of the gremlins. Uh, he he is the the character in Police Academy. Yeah, he's like sound effect guy. Sound effect guy. Yeah, yeah. can't remember what his name is. Yeah. He's also in Spaceballs. It's, yeah, he is. In, yes, mm-hmm. he is in Spaceballs. Mm-hmm. Correct. Mm-hmm. Baseball is such a great movie. Ooh, yeah. Such oh my god, we should we, do Spaceballs, we do Spaceballs at, some Balls at some point. Um, you didn't do. Are you do? You, oh, see. Okay, give your score for Gremlins 2, because Great. I I didn't separate them. Okay. I just did the entire GCU. Okay, so uh, I gave it 70. Uh, Gremlins 2, the new batch. Yeah. IMDb gives it a 6.4. Uh-huh. Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 69% fan okay. and critic score. Fans and critics are in sync on this one. Wow. And uh, Google reviews, 88% of Google reviewers like Isn't Gremlins 2. Isn't that a little 2. higher than That's Gremlins 1? Two points higher than Gremlins. Yeah. And uh, I gave it an 80. Okay. I, guys... I know this is controversial. I enjoyed Gremlins 2, yeah. the new batch, more so than Gremlins. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy to unpack that a little bit yeah, we're gonna after get you there. give your scores. Okay. Uh, I know that's controversial. I hope you'll keep listening. listening. No, they all look we can We can just chalk it up to another thing that makes me a terrible person. We're just talking to the wind now at this point. And uh, I understand that this is not going to be a popular opinion, but I prefer Gremlins to the new batch. Okay, I Sketch, did not tell us tell us your score for Gremlins. I did not separate the two. I just I just scored the the entire GCU as a whole, and I gave it a seventy eight. And nice. now, now that you're making me think which one I liked better, I don't know which one I liked better. There there are aspects of both I like more than the other. Um, it honestly would come down to what would I be in the mood for? What would I That's be in fair. the mood to watch? That's fair uh, because it's too strikingly different movies. They are. With two strikingly different tones. Do you want to unpack it a little bit? Yeah, I and mean... I'll, it, and I'll give my combined score was a 75 for the universe. It's going to filter into my rants and raves. Sure. So, uh... So let's unwrap it. Let's let's un- unwrap this this present. What should we open first? Um, uh, I... Well... Raves. 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 It's the holiday raves. season. Sure. So, uh, yeah. Let's I, go My combined gremlin score is a 75. It's right on par with 78. Yeah. Yep. We did the math. We got it. We got it. Raves. Raves. You want you want Gremlins, to start the G C U. Um yeah, now what I did was I I I wrote down uh two raves for each. Two raves for, I have, for one. I have a lot two. of I combined my rants and okay. raves for both. Okay. So I might bounce bounce back and forth a sure. little bit. Sure. Per usual. Yeah. Per usual. You want to start? I will start with a rave for the first one. Okay. And I am going to say Billy. Now, oh wow! Okay, not yep. necessarily the acting because fine, the acting isn't great, but fine. But I will say that as a character, I like that he breaks like a lot of the stereotypes because he is. So he's a teenager. He's not yep. like a little boy. He's a teenager, but he's he, he's brave, but he's also very caring. Like he's caring and nurturing for Gizmo. He cuddles him, and he like he's not That's afraid true. to like like to be nurturing. Which I feel like I That's didn't fair. grow up with a lot of that in the 80s and early 90s. Like seeing a boy teenage character in a nurturing way. I, right? I will echo that. And he's he's responsible. He's holding down a job. You know, I mean, he's at a bank. At a bank. He's a teenager and this lady has it out for him. He does bring his dog he to work. He does bring his dog to work. That was but, not. But it's, it's legitimately not safe at home for his dog. Like That's one fair. of those inventions is going to murder his dog. <laughs> He's he's basically supporting his family. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute yeah. because it is straight up a murder house. Yes. He's he's supporting his family and he's not complaining about any of it. Like there's not a scene of like, woe is me, my life is tough. Like he's just he's supporting his family. He's there for his mother. He comes home from a hard day at work. He immediately is like, what can I do to help? Let me help make dinner. I'll use this nightmare egg cracking machine. Like <laughs> everything in that house is a uh, the, death trap. The juicer. The father oh, is like the juicer the, that like Th- is like baby vomit. Well, I, oh. I also wrote, there is way too oh. much juice in this, this orange. <laughs> There's too much juice. That in this juicer. Orange. Oh, long time listeners. If just like projectile pea soup baby vomit. And for, oh. for the most part, for the most part, he was very respectful of Kate. Yes. He was definitely into her. I, I made a note about, um, about uh, st- uh, portrayal, gender portrayals of the 1980s, this completely broke with that. Yeah. Particularly broke with Goonies, which was like yeah, 180 in the other direction. Yeah. And so that's why I that's why I, I labeled Billy as a as a rave. I mean, because you, 
My my first note in this movie is basically like, oh, I can't stand Gremlins. Billy, he's like so terrible. And your first rave is like, Billy's fucking awesome. Billy, and is I like, can't argue he, with you. And I guess we could just add that to why yet another reason why I'm a horrible human because being. Because he's like, but listen, he might not be portrayed wonderfully, Oscar worthy. But the fact that he was the written that way is written well. Is I go. Thank you for giving us that in 84. I, I will have to agree with that. Certainly, he is a better human being than any of the characters in Ghostbusters. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. What's your first rave? My first rave. Um, just, I get, I was going to start here. Yeah. Billy's mom. That's, that's Billy's, my next rave. Billy's mom is fucking amazing. She my note is for a Billy's, badass. My note for Billy's mom is she could straight up fight the predator. She is. She is such a fucking badass. The number one gremlin slayer in the she, entire GCU. In the, yes, in the entire GCU. Strong agree. Yes. She straight up murders three gremlins yes. on her, and uh, not kills, nay, murders. Oh no, no, she massacres three them. Yes, gremlins from the time she. The first thing she does is grab a knife to yep. go upstairs in the house before Billy even calls and tells her what's going on. She grabs a butcher's knife. Yeah goes upstairs, and whatever, she, she is gonna... She's ready to throw down. She's ready to throw down from the first minute, and you don't get that. It's She's a sleeper character. Mm -hmm. You kind of think she's kind of a pushover, but yeah. she is a strong... No, no, yeah. Suburban housewife. She, she is... She's holding She's holding down the fort while Dad's out there, like, fucking In up the country <laughs> with his murder, <laughs> murder machines. Can you imagine using the bathroom, buddy? Oh, yeah. It, oh. it would... Oh. You, you need serious medical attention. I mean, All of these, and she kills them with the inventions that he has made, like the blender thing. And then, and then she comes down, downstairs after like, oh no. And what does she do? Now, what one thing you can do, leave the house. She, she makes zero attempt she to grabs leave the a house. Second a knife. second She knife. starts dual wielding <laughs> yes. kitchen knives. And she is oh ready to God. throw down. She Yes. Thank you. Yeah. No, she is. Bad ass. Oh, she, what? She is the MVP of she this movie. Is. She is. And I was so sad that she wasn't in the second movie. Yeah. I was so sad to yeah. see that. Because but you know what? I'm okay with her not being in the second movie because it would have diminished It would have diminished She yes. was so great in the first movie. So, so strong. Billy's, I don't even think she had a name. I think she was yeah, just Billy's mom. Right. Billy's mom. Remind me. Okay. She puts one in the juicer blender. She puts one, she puts one in the mixer. Yep. She puts one in the microwave. One in the microwave. And I think she just straight up stabs, stabs one. one. Might be. Yeah, I'm blanking on it. I do I'm know there I'm blanking on the third kill. But one yeah. in the microwave yep. explodes. Yep. One in the... The, the, the juicer the, thing. It, it was a, no, it wasn't a juicer. It was, well, the, look, it it was, was a stand mixer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A stand yeah, mixer. Yeah, it just tore apart. Oh. <laughs> All that's left are feet. <laughs> just feet. And guts. I think she's... Everywhere. I think she stabbed... Stabs one. I just can't even remember. And then, and but then I know her she and Billy. Oh no, they throw it. Those. They throw it in the fireplace. That's the one but Billy that helps it? her kill. I think she stabbed one. Yeah, I feel like she stabbed one too. Yeah, I mean she's she's holding her own against um, two gremlins at once. Yes. who have ambushed her from the, the 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 tree. The tree, which was an awesome visual. It was with the tree behind her yes. with all the lights and yep. then their and the, eyes their are eyes glowing. And, oh. oh, awesome visual. Best visual of the whole but movie. I would agree. Um, and so they come out, they attack her, and and she's holding him off before Billy yes. gets there, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. slices off one of their heads with a with a sword. Yes, That's fucking awesome. It is, and and she's just clutch. She's she, so great. I was very disappointed when when he brings her to the neighbor's house. She's like, watch, mom. Yeah. Like, what? You just took your MVP out of the game, yeah. Billy. Yeah. I think mom protected those those that neighbors from dying. <laughs> That's how I <laughs> interpret the whole rest of the movie. Because the body count at the end of Gremlins is high. It is surprising. I Very started high. keeping it in the first. I had the Gremlins legit kill a lot before, of people. Before the turn, mm -hmm. I had um, the teacher, mm -hmm. uh, the neighbors, mm -hmm. uh, Santa. Mm -hmm. oh, the, yeah, Santa. Mrs. Deagle. Her name's Deagle. Mrs. Deagle. Santa stuck with me from a childhood. Yeah, the, that, I remember like, that. Watching Santa get That's like, what did it. clawed up. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, that was... That's dark as, to see as a child. The teacher, the neighbors, Santa. The two police officers. The two police officers imagine. are dead. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Mrs. Deagle. Yeah. I have the two cops super there. super dead. And uh, Rock and Ricky. No, he's alive. Oh, at the, the end of the movie, he comes back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, there's been some 
Crazy <laughs> shit. Sure. Oh, Rock and Ricky. Yep. So Rock and Ricky's alive, but yeah. And he was basically supposed to be Howard Stern, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Rock and Ricky. He yeah. sounded like Howard oh, yeah. Stern. I wouldn't be surprised if that was an uncredited Howard Stern. Maybe it was. Maybe. Maybe. Rock and Ricky survived. His producer died? Somebody, Somebody at Rock died. and Ricky's died. Oh, yeah. Because you hear the screaming. People died all over the place. But, I, I mean, conservatively, I would say a, a dozen people yeah. in town. I would get behind or a more. dozen. I would get behind a dozen. Yeah. And they, I mean, it's they lead you town. to believe the it's Futtermans died. Yeah. They I mean, were I, I run would, over by a, a harvester. I would count them in the deaths of the of first the movie. First movie. Yeah. I mean, they're it is, only brought it back just, as a sequel. It yeah. is just so that they can be in the second movie that they yeah. are written in that. Like, nope. It was just a big fright. Yeah. They they were okay. Um, yeah, a lot of death. A lot of but surprising Billy's, body count. Billy's mom was awesome. Uh, I, was I imagine badass. everybody that was in the bar when the gremlins showed up. Sure. Everybody in the movie theater when the gremlins showed up. Yeah. Dead. Yeah. dead. Just dead at the feet of the gremlins. Dead. So dead. I, I mean, how, how many, you worked in a theater. How many people does a theater like that seat? Oh, hundreds. Yeah, so like oh, hundreds. hundreds of people yeah. dead yeah. at the feet of the gremlins. Yeah, yeah. Small town though. Small town. This might be a great point. We're talking about the town. Did you and it was catch? A, it was a late night showing of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So might not have which been was like released in nineteen eighty. The most packed theater, but yeah. I remember that being pretty big. I had a poster from Burger King. No, I agree. Snow, it was Snow big. I'm, was just big. Saying, I'm just did saying. Did you catch that the town? Yeah. Was, uh, the town from Back to the Future. Oh, no, I didn't. That was, like, the theater at the end of... So whatever yeah. back lot that, that... It must be the it. universal back lot. Mm-hmm. That was the... the And this came out before mm-hmm. Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. The the town hall had a brick facade, mm-hmm. and they redressed it, like, all in white mm-hmm. for Back to the Future. But yeah. it's the, it is... Hill, Hilldale? Back to the Future? Yeah, all I can think of is Sunnydale, but that's Buffy. That's, that's Buffy, yeah. yeah that's Buffy. I think it's Hilldale. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think and it like is, the DeLorean, I can't think of what it is. The DeLorean drives into the theater at the, in, in yeah. kills a bunch of gremlins. Clearly, it kills a bunch of gremlins. So anyway, it was the same. It was the same street as as Back to the Future. Yeah, I thought that was fun. We're picking up a lot of these. Uh, yeah, little references. Well, Spielberg. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Is it my rave? It is your rave. Okay. Um, that was just we're only two raves. That was just the mom's rave. Yeah, we oh man, we gotta we gotta get through these raves. Yeah, we got two movies here. Um, yeah, uh, the Gremlins. Uh, I'll just leave it vague. The Gremlins, the way they looked, the Perfectly way they acted, terrifying their and delightful. snarls, oh, the yeah. way they they animated their lips, you know, so they could do that Strong really agree. good snarl. Um, I wrote down they were rightfully terrifying, and uh, oh yeah, that's where I wrote down the the Christmas tree with their eyes. That that was just so perfect. I liked that they all had personalities in the first one yep. without going overboard. Yep. They all, they just the one was like the flasher yep. in the trench coat. Yep. That was like the one that was eh, eh. a little too much. Um, and the melting, like the the effects of the, the melting, melting was awesome. It was it was right out of um, Raiders. Yeah, it was like that same effect. Yeah, where, like when they threw it in the fireplace yep. and all the skin melted off oh, yeah. of it to, down to the skull. Yeah, and, like liquefied. Yeah, that oh, was great. Oof. It was great. That's that was a great. So I memory. guess I guess I guess great effects yeah. is my strong agree. Is my takeaway. Is my universe rate. or just specifically the first movie? Specifically, specifically first the first movie. <laughs> hey, you know what the first movie didn't have? This wonderful Canadian themed restaurant. That's true. Did not poutine and chocolate mousse. I can't think of anything else. Uh, the horn's fantastic. The horn I'm glad is I got fantastic. The horn. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, raves. I mean, we talked about the. I just say the concept. Uh, it's so ridiculous yet perfect for this era, mm-hmm. uh, and it, it, the the rules you can't get them wet. Sunlight kills them. Don't feed them after midnight. Simple rules. Simple rules. Yeah. Nonsensical rules. Specific rules. But it it take works. It and run with it. Yeah. It and they do take it and run with it. And everything that happens, particularly in the first movie, is a result of a rule being broken. Yeah. By Corey Feldman specifically. Yeah. Not just Car- the teacher. The teacher breaks the rules. I want to put this the- all on Corey. Shoulders. Okay, sure, we can. I yeah. mean, it's deservingly so. Yeah, deservingly <laughs> so. Sorry, Corey. I'm just kidding. The, have you ever the, su- the sunglasses? The sunglasses. That alone, Corey Feldman. We can blame anything on him. Sunglasses. What's, I don't know that reference. The movie. Sunglasses. Oh, the Corys. Corey Haim. Corey Feldman. It's terrible. Did you model your life on it? As Possibly. Shades? All right. Possibly. All right. No, that thing you do did it for me at okay. a very young age. Okay. I couldn't been that young. Maybe like mid nineties. Yeah. That thing you do. Yeah, I'm, I'll put I'm, that out there now. I'm with you, but I'm not with you. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. But it's awesome. a movie called That Thing You Do. Awesome. And did you do it? 
Uh, yeah. All right. It's a movie about a fictional band. Okay. Yeah. And that thing you do became that thing you do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. That thing you do squared. I'll I'll put that out there now. The long, shade story. Long time listeners, that's the shade story. So at a very young age, the dr- they give the drummer in the band a pair of sunglasses. Like, never take them off. That's your thing. I was like, okay, oh, that's cool. That became your thing. Yeah. Oh. Became my thing. Interesting. I was like, oh, guys, okay. I'm gonna wear sunglasses and never take, take it's them off. Always these '80s movies where we learn a it's lot. It's a '90s about movie though. It's a '90s movie. Yeah, no, but I'm talking about Gremlins. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. And it's, it's an episode about '80s movies sure. that we, we learn, learn a things. lot yeah, about. Sure. I also learned earlier in this episode that you. I'm also a, light sensitive, and you are also light yeah. sensitive. <laughs> so, so I was like, oh, that's gonna be my thing. Yeah, you lucked out there. I did. It'd be like if someone had a limp, but were, was like wearing had a, like a really cool cane. Yeah, you know, like it's, exactly it's useful. It's house, yeah, but that, it's also my shit. house MD. He had yeah. the, the cane with the flames on it. See, early in the episode, you said how you had uh, the cousin and the uncle who like yeah. got you into these things. And we always talk about, like, growing up, and longtime listeners have really blamed my parents for this. Like, I didn't experience a lot of these properties and movies fair, and stuff yeah. like that. I was also the oldest of my generation. I was the one, I, w- I didn't have an older yeah. cousin or, or a younger Yeah, all your uncle. cousins are younger than you. Yeah, so I was, I was the first one on the frontier of pop culture, so I was wow. kind of finding You're the pioneer. Own. Yeah. You're the, you're the trailblazer. I've always said that about myself. Yeah. Always. That's how I describe you when people ask. Yeah. Sketch, he's a real trailblazer. He's a real... It's a trailblazer. Real trailblazer. I modeled my life after a 90s movie, but Sketch, he's the trailblazer. <laughs> I didn't say I modeled my life after. And that's what we all got from it, right, everybody? Okay, sure. Band agrees with me. The band. <laughs> band agrees with me. Still. Still so here. professional. Still here. Um, all right, we got to get moving. We, we, we do. We got okay, so uh, much gremlins yeah, So the, the concept. You're, do you have another one? If if I go into more raves, I'm going to start talking too. That's Am I fine. allowed to start I, talking uh, too? I don't think I have any. I'll just I'll just say that. Oh, this was they set the dad up to be like the putz. Yeah, but he's actually very responsible, uh, even though he, for a hapless inventor, mm-hmm. like he does show up towards the end of the movie mm-hmm. and he's like, oh, sh-, like, oh yeah, he he's he's they set him up that like he's not going to. He's like this kind of overweight. Mm-hmm irresponsible guy mm-hmm. inventors inventors are stupid that he's just not a responsible guy and, and he's going to be the one that I mean, he's not i mean he's legit out there he's legit trying yeah, i mean he's his inventions are horrible well this is also the end trying. of the door-to-door salesman like yeah. the 1980s truly yeah. was the his, death of the door-to-door salesman market he's trying is to up. and he's trying to I, I get the idea like he was a door-to-door salesman mm-hmm. that that market has been replaced by like Tupperware and mm-hmm. Avon and he's done. Yeah. He is done. Like department oh, I, stores are everywhere and he is now trying to create products that people will yes, want to buy so I he can he continue the livelihood. His, his, his story that like he is a, he is a relic of the past yep. and he is adapting the best he can, but in the wrong way. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And I thought I, I was, sup- I was pleasantly surprised with how they addressed that character. Yeah. See, they handled characters pretty they did. well in one. They did. And, uh, yeah. All right. Well, you, you brought up the dad, so let me bring up my favorite character in the second movie. Okay. Clamp. Well, I ended up he, loving I Clamp. loved him. When I first saw Clamp, I, loved- I, I thought, okay, first I thought, writing's on the wall, this is the ultimate bad guy. Yeah. He's going to be... He's going to be pulling the strings on he's everything. Gonna be, he's going like, to be the reason be everything's the, going bad. He's going to be the, the, the most heinous yeah. and... Uh, odious yeah. uh, version of present day Donald Trump sure. that that has been depicted. Because he was definitely whatever whatever your whatever your this is not a, a political indictment. This is like the the worst possible dep- depiction of Donald Trump that is given us today. That is what the the yes. the perception of this character is going to be. He's and a horrible boss. He only cares about money. And He's they were like, so they were so leading up to that. They, they were, were so leading up to that. I mean, this this was, this was like, well, we can't get eighties nineties Donald Trump for a movie, so let's just make one. Yeah, and his his uh his book is literally a reskinned art of the deal. Oh, is it? It looks exactly like it. He's I forgot what it's called. He's got Clamp Tower. I love the Clamp logo. Like, yes, the Clamp the logo world was and like. It was perfect. It was so smartly designed for for just a, just a set piece. Yeah, really. And the the one outside the the yeah, side, the one the that squished spins, earth the squished spins. Earth, it's in the, I, I love it. It's great. But I also thought <laughs> that he, escape hatch. He has an escape <laughs> he has hatch. An escape. That oh my god, that is quintessential like eighties parody. But I loved it. And I he, loved it. Well, he needs an escape hatch because did you notice? The sky, the skyscraper has one one exit. exit. One it's exit. The only way in and out. Yep. But um. 
I also, I thought he, he, I said, oh, this is what I wrote down. He embodies chaotic neutral and he's just a successful version of Billy's dad. He's yeah, just an that's inventor. That's exactly selling what stuff. he is. And it just so happens his all work ha- have made him successful. Yep. And they don't necessarily all work because like the running gag is that like the revolving door never works. Yes. In the movie. <laughs> Um, yeah, they, they have to run through, they have to go all the way to the end where yeah. there's an actual yes. door. And the That's cops a, yeah. at the end even have to go. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, Oh, and that was a Blues Brothers parody. Was oh, was cops it? Were like, hot, 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 oh, okay, yeah. But it was, by by mid-movie, when you're like, you know what? I actually think this the guy turn is like comes, a he, like, he actually guy. cares about his secretary. Yes. He actually, like, he's actually he, like, trying to help, like... He's like, oh yeah, I can try my escape hatch, and then we'll put a we'll put a giant banner up outside. Like he's actively working and for he's, su- solutions, and he's he's surprisingly rational too. Because when I think the guy's Forrester, like the security guy, yeah, he's Forrester, he's like he's got Billy, and he's like, here's the main problem, and he's like, uh, he's from the art department, right? What kind of threat, what kind of is, threat, this threat is this guy? I was like, this guy actually has a decent head on his yep. shoulders, yeah. And yeah, he just wants to help. And when when you kind of see all of his motivations, they kind of all boil down to. Okay, yeah, he's making a lot of money off this, but he doesn't really necessarily seem greedy. He really just seems he like really doesn't. I want to provide to the people what the people want. Right. Like uh when when they're like, sorry about your building, he was like, ah, it was always gonna be a all, failure. Yeah. Like, this is what people want anymore. They want small they town. Want small I want town. you to yeah. help with it because you you get it. I was like, you know what? This guy isn't necessarily like good and benevolent. He's but he's not bad. He's a nut like a nutty professor futurist. Yeah. He just he's on the he's on the like the bleeding edge mm-hmm. of 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 what's happening in society. Mm-hmm. He wants to give people like usable products mm-hmm. that they actually want, but is also ready to make a buck from yep. it and is unapologetic for that. And I really like that. I, I loved re- that. I really he liked that Uncle about him. F- the 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 best moment, like the one of, or like a great example of that is like um, uh, Grandpa Munster. Mm-hmm has like a television show yeah. that's kind of like a joke television show. Mm-hmm. But he, like, you, who told you you could go on the air through all of this? I was like, oh, it just seemed like the thing to do. Yes, go down to Brooks Brothers. Like, here's a credit card. Yeah. Get yourself some clothes. Get under, you yeah. know, He's go like, on a vacation, then come back. You're doing the nightly news from he, now on. Like, he, what? He re- And this is probably part of what makes him such a successful businessman. He recognizes talent and worth in people. Yeah. You know what? <coughs> Uncle Vampire is absolutely right. Yeah. This was yeah, yeah, yeah. he was a, he was live on the scene, and he pulled the he pulled the the guy who was taking the tour mm-hmm. to be the cameraman yep. who doesn't actually to yep. be his camera. The whole like, do you have a camera? I am a camera. I, I am a camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, not um, true, but okay. Yeah, you right. got the yeah, you got yeah. the spirit. Buddy. He was also uh, from uh, Weird Al's UHF movie. Okay, he was Wheel of Fish. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I see that. Yeah. So it, 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 Clamp just ended up being a big rave for me, yeah, and I was, was so great. happy where he ended in the movie too. Clamp 2020. Yeah. I I get behind that. I'd also get behind that. I I trust Clamp. I do. I trust Clamp. He has good intentions. He does. I mean, all of our all we'll all be stuck in elevators. It was a little scary when when they were like scanning ID badges because I was like, oh, we're like so fucking we're, there. Sir, like, yeah. Like I know, right? Wow. Wow. <laughs> yep. Um the vision of the world that came to be. Yep. Like, ooh. Yeah. But I blame Forrester more for that. I I agree. Clamp. I he he got his comeuppance. Yep. Yeah, but he was happy with him. My last note for Grimlock. Forrester too, was happy with the situation. He smiled at the end. Did you see that in the last scene when Gremlinette is coming at him? He like resigned first. Okay, first he's terrified. Right, guys, we're talking about the Gremlin fucking scene. Yeah, um, he is repeatedly sexually assaulted absolutely. by a Gremlin. Absolutely, he is repeatedly. Absolutely. His clothes are torn. Yes, he's got he lipstick all over lipstick him. all over him. We can read Basically, the room. for the third act of the movie, he's been sexually assaulted in a bathroom yes. on the 40th floor. Absolutely. But Gremlinette, Grem, Gremet, Grem, Gremlinette, Gremlinette, she's coming at him at she the end. She looks like a prostitute. Oh, yeah. But she she's looks, like, she's, she looks like, she like what like you a, would imagine like a prostitute version of Miss Piggy would look like. Yes. That's a very apt description. Thank you. A prostitute Miss Piggy. Yeah. Yeah. Um... She's coming at him at the end in like a wedding dress or something. Yes. And he at and first looks da, terrified. Da, da, da. Uh-huh. Just like that. That's perfect. Yep. But at the end, he gives he like smiles. a little smile like, this isn't the worst thing in the world. And that's what we go out on. That's what wow. we go out. That's a bold decision. That is a bold decision. To go out on that. Because um, that was the last note I wrote. It really stuck with me. 
I I must have not been paying attention at that point. Gonna, I remember. I'm going to urge you to go back and watch. That. I'm probably not going to do it. I'm going to urge uh, you to Google Gremlin Love. Oh, have you, did you do it? Don't do that. Did you do it? I did not. Oh, okay. God, I'm not. I'm not I'm willing not, to take that risk. I'm also not willing. I don't want yeah. that in my browser. That history. should be a fourth rule. <laughs> do not. Google. Do not. Do not engage with intercourse with the gremlins. I would imagine that's a I, unwritten rule. I feel rule. like he was not a willing participant. No, he wasn't. And up until that point, there were no female gremlins. They were all yes, very. She is the only female yeah, gremlin because she drank the potion. The potion, yes. Yeah, or the, the genes or whatever the, from yeah. the lab. Yes, they were all changing into all different, all stuff. different things. Yeah, um, yeah. New batch, new batch. It taps right into the airplane style sense of humor. Yes, it does. I I love that. You're you're blending into my next. It's rave, it is so I might jump in. On still this. a terrifying concept, but it's like watching a live action cartoon, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think it's exactly what Joe Dante set out to create. Mm -hmm. And and so I, part of why I. I put two a little bit higher up than one mm -hmm. is that one didn't seem to know what it was at times, mm -hmm. whether it was a, a horror, a comedy, and that, you know, it was still a new genre. Mm -hmm. I don't think they had many examples to point to. Um, yeah, they were building the planets they were flying. Yeah, it, it, they didn't seem to ever really know what, what they were or how to execute it. Gremlins 2 knew exactly what it was yes. from Go. And I think it had a, a clearer vision and executed and that they vision. But they did. Mm -hmm. They committed 100%. Even uh, Billy and Kate, they're like, oh, yes, honey. No, honey. Like, they're living that, like, small town kids have gone mm -hmm. to the big city uh, shtick. Mm -hmm. And it really is. It's like a, a like a, almost like a spoof on the honeymooners. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like the old sock bam right in the kisser kind of thing. Now, would you agree that Billy and Kate did better in the second movie? Yes, they're yeah. both much better. Yeah. I would agree and I, I attribute that to essentially a decade going by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've they've just improved their craft. Mm -hmm. and I just there's there's something about you know it's it's that like kind of slapstick Looney Tunes comedy. Yeah, it was really like the first live action Looney Tunes cartoon. I would say. Well, let me jump in on this because sure. this is this is the the last rave that I have written down too, specifically about two. I wrote that this works as a spoof farce movie because it's charming. It's fun. It pokes fun at pop culture. It has, self. It has so many references. Oh. It breaks the fourth wall a lot. A lot. Um, like, like you're welcome, Deadpool. The the number one the the number one point when I was like, okay, this is a rave because of how much they're yeah. they're poking fun is when Kate starts to give her spiel about President's Day. Or Lincoln's birthday, oh, Lincoln's or whatever, <laughs> because like, that scene when I was basi in basically the first movie, she's molested by an Abraham Lincoln I think that's what we're supposed in the, to, in the park. I think that's what we were getting to that's, before was that is. I did make that note. But, like, are they suggesting that when she was six, she was molested by an Abraham Lincoln in person? And I and and I should probably clarify here. That's not the part I'm finding humorous and in the first movie. But in the first movie, she has the she trauma goes so dark, so dark. So so dark about basically her, her dad father. is the dumbest human being ever well i mean he was doing something cute and he wasn't drunk or anything he slipped and broke his neck going he was down the trying chimney. to actually slide down the chimney yeah. for I, christmas morning i imagine like, sketch i'm going to encourage you not people. to try and slide down the chimney do for christmas this year still have chimneys anymore some people do wow but i mean no chimney no no one should do it works this way there are there are but in chimney a, stacks inside the stone in a chimney. You, in a kid's you cannot movie, do this. Please like don't try I think it. Gremlins was, was at times. It worked. It is like the, and the it, urban and legend and of the turned, dad going down the chimney, slipping, yeah. break, getting stunk, and it dying. So dark. So dark. Because she goes real into it. Yeah. Like. Yep. Like. Like. Like deer Christmas. in a headlight. Yes. Like just blank stare, like just recounting Full on, this incredibly traumatic experience. Post traumatic stress. Yeah. Like the stereotypical, like glazed over in the eyes Vietnam veteran. And that scene was pretty much the most disturbing thing in in, in Gremlins. Gremlins one. Yes. So when they the then when they turn around and spoof it into in, on President's Day, yeah. I was like, Thank All you. Yeah. Thank you for yep. like addressing that, that you kind of recognize that yep. about the first movie. 
I loved that. Yeah. And then I also... The subject matter's a little... Eh, didn't, oh, yeah, Didn't sure. age well. Didn't but age well. But what they were doing. Like, yes, what they were this doing. This was such an elaborate part of her character. Of course, mm-hmm. everything traumatizes her, and she's going to have a story for, for any... Every holiday. Holiday, mm-hmm. event, reference. Like That's just who this character is. And just is. like the first one, it came out of nowhere. Yeah. Hard left turn. Yeah, because the old guys like talking about George Washington right. and Abraham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Abraham, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln. Don't bring up Abraham Lincoln. I remember when I was eight years. Oh my god! Yeah. It was. It was. And perfect. then and then Billy like pulls her away. Like, yeah. okay, hon, we we, we, gotta we go. can't do that right we gotta, now. Yeah, yep. snap out of it. Which makes me feel like he's dealt with this a lot. A lot. In the six yes, years yeah, that have passed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been. This is just <laughs> one in a long string yep. of when I was mm-hmm. X happened. Mm-hmm. I'm scarred for life. Yep. Loved it. That was just smart it's comedy writing. It is. It is just smart writing. Yep. And I'll just say this. I think, to me personally, I think the movie benefited having not been written by Chris Columbus. Mm-hmm. If you're someone like me mm-hmm. who does not like his particular you don't? style of, of storytelling. I didn't pick up on that. Yeah. You keep that real close to the chest. I do. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, the, I, it's the ace up my sleeve that I, that I hold on to. Yeah. I don't publicize it. All right. Can we, can we move on to rants? Rants, because please. Yeah. this peppers in really well to one of my rants. Great. Okay. And again, mine are separated by one and two, so I'm going to skip ahead to two and Great. just say that having it be so much of a spoof movie took away a lot of the Gremlins aspects yeah. of the movie. Gremlins 2, here's my note. Gremlins 2, which I think is more a uh, more authentic vision, is too heavy with the co- with the commentary. Mm-hmm. It needed to be sharper. Yeah. It needed to be a, a more a sharper instrument. Mm-hmm. Um, it was too much just not Gremlins anymore. Yes. Nobody died. Like, okay, Christopher Lee died. Other than that, Maybe. I don't think anybody... Did. Well, he was electrocuted. I'm uh, pretty sure he's pretty dead gonzo. But, <laughs> like... If and, there was a third movie, I'm sure we would, like, we would have seen him back. And the premise was so... It was there. Right. This smart building. These gremlins right, can right, right. have it. Perfect. And they don't really go back to that, like, mechanical tampering they don't, anymore o- in only, this movie. Only in the control room when they physically and bust out of and the... And that's like it. And that's it, yeah. And 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 the whole building was just it, so It was a perfect with concept it. Was that so they never much. tapped into. And I was legit excited at the beginning of the movie when I was like, this is the setting? Right. They're gonna run amok. I saw that more as a spoof on Die Hard. Yeah. That, like, the, the whole thing with the building was mm-hmm. a rip on Die Hard. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I think it was a I, I agree. It was a big rant for me yeah. because it was a perfect setup that they never addressed. Yeah. Where was the gremlin in the, in the machine for his escape, mm-hmm. his escape route? Because, like, how did he get from the 40th floor or whatever it was mm-hmm. to a potted plant on ground level yeah. without, a like, a gremlin? Somewhere in the machine. Somewhere in the machine. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're big, paying attention at rant. home, if big you're rant. following along at home, I call this a rave in that making this a spoof movie is a great Brilliant. spoof movie, but making this a Gremlins movie, uh, not a it's, great not, Gremlin movie. it's not a great follow-up. And I'm yeah. sure that's why it tanked. Yeah. It's because mo- most people went to this not wanting a spoof movie, right. wanting a follow-up to Gremlins. I agree. But Gremlins end up being like this, this, I don't think this group of characters is a great avenue to do spoofs. Yeah. And, and these characters could have stayed together in in other universes, mm-hmm. not dealing with gremlins. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like, like uh, Futterman and Billy and Kate, mm-hmm. send them on adventures. Sure. Dealing with it, like put them in the Critters universe, yeah. put them in like random, they're just, and they work in this like slapstick human mm-hmm. cartoon world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll just say my first rant all of the character gremlins in the new batch yeah that were clearly marketing for toys the chef Mm -hmm. the smart one the dumb one Mm -hmm. the bat the electrician and the prostitute Mm -hmm. like it was just the the how does like how did the gremlin learn to be an electrician merchandising you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. the how why did the smart one have like an australian accent Mm -hmm. uh, was that a thing i feel like that was a thing like that voice. I remember that voice from other things. Yeah, maybe at the time. Maybe it like a claymation cartoon yeah. from from this era. Maybe. But um maybe like a, a National Geographic type thing mm-hmm. that they were spoofing. I don't none of those characters worked. No. But it was 
taking what they had established in the first movie of mm-hmm. the personalities of the the m- malicious gremlins mm-hmm. and elevating that and making fun of it. Like, why was Stripe evil from Go? Right. Why like they drank the the stuff mm-hmm. and they mutated. Yeah. And then we got characters and it, you know, it was it just didn't hit. It was clearly no, from it, a merchandising it, it, yeah, aspect. And it did. It 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 reeked of that and it and it reeked of um just like like payoffs, like just sloppy setups to payoffs, like the one turning into a gargoyle. It was uh, like, yeah. okay, it has to turn into a bat, so it then can turn into a gargoyle. It's a gargoyle. But yeah. wait, it can't go outside. Okay, inject it with sunscreen. So, right. And, you know, like, <laughs> it was just like sloppy. It was. Um, and then... We just we just want to be a civilized society. Yeah, and, and that like, murders another grab. Was that civilized? That, that brings me to another rant. Can I? Sure. May I? Please. In, By all means. In two, they just dis- they they just disregard too many of their own rules. Yeah, their own their own things that they set up. They just disregard, and they're simple rules. Don't go in the daylight. Our first scene of Gizmo, he runs out into it the runs daylight. Runs out into the daylight. He yeah, be dead. he should be dead instantly. You know, it's it's daytime. There was a workaround there. Yeah. There was an easy workaround. Easy there. workaround. And and send him into the sewers. Like when he's when he's being photocopied. That okay, sh- that, that light should have him. just burned him up yes. to nothing. That's Gizmo should have been blind for the rest yes. of the movie. Like, you're disregarding for gas. Yeah. And then uh, you still got to follow your rules. Right. And then when Brainy, like you said, just wanting to be civilized, but he he doesn't really want to be, be civilized. civilized. He doesn't. So what is his end game? Like, what is he trying to do? Just get out of the building? Does Is he smart enough to think he can talk his way out of the building? Because nothing I've seen deposits that idea. He's just straight up going to murder people. Yeah. So there's too many of these, like, incongruencies in two. Yeah. That just, like, you had a simple set of rules. Right. You had a simple set of expectations, and you just kind of blew them You more. know what? You, you disregarded them, but you didn't replace them with anything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just while we're talking about the rules, how do how do the rules work? We're like stickler for the rules. Uh, well, if you're in an established rules, like, and oh, they kind of, they kind of, they do address this in the sequel. Uh, what happens if they're on a, on a plane? Mm-hmm. What if they're traveling on a plane? They and do time slightly zones. address this in the sequel, uh, which I, feeding them, I appreciate. Feeding them after, like, what if there's a crumb stuck in their their tooth mm-hmm. and, and they swallow it after midnight? Mm-hmm. Uh, what if, why, why do they, how much water? Mm-hmm. Like, don't get them wet. Mm-hmm. Is is their amount of their reproduction proportionate to the amount of water that they are, that they come into contact with? Yeah, and what, what how much water must be in a fluid before it's considered getting them wet? Right. Because they're drinking beer all right. over the place. Exactly. And they're fine. Uh, sweat does sweat make them yeah. reproduce these are that, all great questions i i don't know and sunlight like there is sunlight why does light why is light painful to them but sunlight kills them mm. do they have to be in direct sunlight can it be a reflection seems like it can be a reflection uh, they just they establish rules but there are just too many gray areas i agree in them i agree i definitely agree um listen Listen, I'm listening. I only got one more rant because we're like, we're like so close to big questions. And I only have like one more like legitimate rant that we haven't already like talked about like organically. Do okay. you have any more rants? Uh, I don't. Okay. So I'll, I'll just finish it with this. And this is just a, this is just a cut and dry rant. Okay. I wasn't provided with something. In Gremlins 1, we really set up this character of Gerald. Who's a real Gerald. dick? Yeah, he works at the oh, bank yeah, with uh, Billy. Judge Reinhold. Judge Reinhold. Yeah, uh, is that who it was? Yeah, Judge I remembered Reinhold. him from the Santa Claus. He's the uh, he's the new husband in Santa Claus. Yeah, he's boyfriend. in Fast Times with Phoebe Cates. He's okay. uh, Billy in, Billy Rosewood and Beverly Hills Cop. Okay, well he he's really set up as as just a, just just a dick. He's just lecherous a on Kate, and he's, he's a douchebag to Billy. Yep, and we never get a Gerald Anything. death. Or a Gerald attack or anything. I feel like... Um, I feel like he, something was cut out. I feel like he probably quit the movie and was filming Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah, that could be. I feel... But it's never even addressed. It's not. He just... We never see him again. No. No. And that was a big rant for me because I, yeah. I wanted my He needed to get his comeuppance. Yep. yep. I needed those comeuppance. Yep. That's a good... That needs to be a shirt too. Needed those comeuppance. <laughs> needed those comeuppance. Because uh, it left me wanting. So anyway, I that's, agree. that's... That's all I'll say for rant. I, I had think, a note about him. Yep. Yeah, I think, you know, I think we covered it. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I agree. Strong agree. Yeah. And that brings us to some, big, some, some, some holiday big questions. Big questions. Some big cues. Well, let's stuff your stockings with some BQs. Yeah, I got a lot of questions, so uh, 
let's just get right into them. Yeah. Uh, I, I, some of them we've already answered. Uh, where do the gremlins keep getting guns? Gremlin-sized guns. The gremlins, and crossbows. especially in the first movie. I mean, those, those every time you turn around, those gremlins packing. have mm -hmm. like thirty-eight caliber revolvers. Snub nose thirty-eight caliber. Specifically, where do they keep getting yeah. them? That was another, not to bring it back to rant, but I was like getting whiplash with like the tone that was being set. Oh, because yeah. like in the mall, Billy was legit about to die. Oh, yeah. Billy was shot with uh, an arrow. He was shot with He's an arrow. He's fired out with guns. Like he a, a is, chainsaw. He They're going to chainsaw him at one point. Legit going to die oh, yeah. violently. Yes. Cut to Gizmo driving the Barbie dream car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I can't. My emotions don't know what to feel right now. Should I feel just like Gizmo, I mean, Yeah, in and the delight? second movie, he goes from cute and cuddly to, to Rambo. Yep. Like, what happened to you? I guess they just pushed him too far. They pushed him too far. I guess that's what happened in the, yeah. uh, in the, in the photocopy here. I guess. got pushed too far. Yep. Um, yeah, what was your question? Where do they get all of oh, their guns yeah. from? I don't know. Uh, I had a similar question when the, when the gremlin is working on the... Um, elevator in the second movie which i guess is a mechanical part yeah but he has a gremlin sized hard hat that has yeah the electrician for yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his ears, his ears. To go through where the fuck do you where get, do that? They get these things it almost deposits that the gremlins almost have like a little bit of magic like maker's magic or yeah like, like santa's like, workshop kind of thing yeah. or like the the uh the yeah the what's the the shoe one the fairy tale the, the, the shoes the, 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 the shoemaker elves the shoemaker elves yeah yeah whatever, whatever. Or like the underpants and gnomes yeah yeah Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, where, the, where the fuck are they getting this stuff from? I don't know. I mean, I like that they use like, guns because yeah, it but like, fits where the do they get the gremlin gun-sized bullets? Mm. There's a whole. I mean, it's a whole. It's a whole economy. <laughs> really? really? Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. The '80s really had to clean up the streets of gremlin, gremlin firearms. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like they like found child-sized firearms. And that maybe that was a problem in the eighties. Uh, yeah, that we was the stereotype. Young. Yeah, we were young. I, so uh, uh, that's another question. Okay, go for but, it. But uh, no, you, you do your first one. Okay. Well, and we've kind of touched on this a couple of times. But why do all of Gizmo's offsprings immediately and innately hate Gizmo? Uh, that's a great question. I mean, I, I think I asked you that earlier. Yeah, and you said like, why are they all mischievous? Right. Uh, immediately, but they immediately start. They they all hate. Gizmo they hate him. Yeah. From the from the start. Yep. And then they go on to make other gremlins, Who but also they're offspring. they also hate Gizmo, right? But they, they don't, don't hate their they don't makers. Hate the, exactly. Why is Gizmo so hated? And why? I mean, part of me can answer it that like Gizmo seems to be the the the, the kindest or the gentlest of the gremlins. He maybe he's the black sheep. All gremlins are like the ones that we see, but Gizmo's the one that's I that think, breaks the mold. I think Gizmo is the original. Yeah. And kind of like making a copy of a copy, mm -hmm. they oh they all they degrade. Just, yes, each generation is somehow more de degraded and degenerated and, and more and more twisted. Because they even in the second movie, they were even having printed T-shirts made that said that, yeah, the Gizmo hated. with a little line through them. Right. Like, again, where the fuck did they get there's the, just a whole? Bunch there's of a moment maker they gremlins. go to the <laughs> in the second movie. They have like the the signal is out. Mm -hmm. The countdown and it has a gremlin caricature mm -hmm. like poking out from behind it. Yes. When where's the gremlin art department? There's a whole gremlin, there's a whole gremlin makers community. I'm that convinced. was the thing that like uh broke it for me in yeah. the second movie when they had like gremlin themed mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, like but, yeah, the, cut in between the, when the, the signal the goes technical out. Difficulty, the technical difficulty gremlin. Uh, the warning. Yeah. Yeah. Um that was too much. That did push the fourth wall break a little yeah. bit too much. Like, when did they have time to create this? So, yeah, where do they keep... The, I, I like your answer that they have, like, a magical maker a kind magical of workshop. They have a maker space, yeah. Yeah, like a, an infinite hammer space where they can pull these things out of. That and I guess sense. just the one... The, the answer that we've never gotten is why they come out... Hating, hating Gizmo. Gizmo. And not just hating him, but, like, knowing that that's Gizmo and we hate him. Yes. Without ever having been informed. Yeah. I agree. Kind of bothers me. Like, it's almost a rant. It's, that's, it's like a ranty big question. Yeah. Do you have a big question? Um, what is a Maogwai? Isn't a Maogwai, isn't that just Chinese for monster? Uh, is, is it? 
I'm asking. I, I feel like there's like a legend of the Mowgli. It's yeah. kind of like an abominable spell monster. I feel or like, like a, I fe- and you know what? We'll, we'll I guess I could have Googled this. it, but I just wanted to ask you. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll address this in, 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 in our uh, midstream. We'll look it up for real. But me just like spitballing here, I think that's just Chinese for monster. Because I think I saw on a plane once a Chinese movie that was called Mowgli. And it was just about like monsters. Okay. Like a monster world that lived concurrent. I'll take it. Like congruent to our, our world. I'll take it. I think that's all it means. But sure. If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely correct If you're wrong, you're going to own it? Okay. Yep. yep. You got an, another BQ? I'll try and give you a BA, big A. Can't gremlins cure world hunger? <laughs> uh, infinite. It's an infinite, infinite food source. Infinite repeat. Yes, a sustainable infinite food source. Yeah. Uh, yes. You if, just need we, to kind of get over the taste. I imagine they don't taste good. I imagine they taste like, like lizard. Yeah. You ever eaten alligator or crocodile? I've had, yeah, I've had gator. Yeah, yeah. I've had gator. It's, it's I imagine bad. they taste like gator. Yeah. The skin, you don't want to eat the skin. You don't want to eat the skin. And I bet, but I, I imagine bet they taste um, like gator. You, you probably have to do something because they seem slimy. Like right yeah. under the, right under the skin, they seem slimy. Yeah. You probably have to do something to, I would imagine. To prepare them. But maybe, I mean. Maybe a nice beer batter. You could totes. Eat gremlins. Maybe some and uh, solve world maybe hunger. some cornmeal. That should be Clamp's next next project. <laughs> I I really thought, and I guess I was giving the movie too much credit, like thinking like that's where is, they were gonna go. Well, when when he was talking about um uh how they're doing on the on the genetic cloning yeah. procedures, I'm like, ooh, they're gonna use Gizmo to unlike unlock, unlock cloning. Cloning. No, that's no. not that's not the direction nope. they went. That was, that a was little, too smart. That was a little too smart. You gave them too much credit. I gave sketch. them too much credit <laughs> he was just looking for his ebola he was just looking for ebola yep uh next question did steven spielberg just need money or something i think he always has just needed money i don't understand like he is i think the creative consultant for all of universal at this point mm-hmm. 1984 okay um they've like given him the keys to universal studios and he's gotten to like redesign the thing mm-hmm. so that you can shoot any movie anywhere anytime mm-hmm. on the universal studios lot did, like, did he just need money? Like, why is Steven Spielberg's name on this? I didn't find that in any of the research. Um, it's not, it I doesn't really, really have, feel like a Steven Spielberg movie. I, I can't give you a big A, but I'll give you a, a, a medium-sized guess. Sure. Uh, I like that. A, a, an MSG, if you will. <laughs> um, I really feel like a... BQs and MSGs. And MSGs. I like that. Wow. Um, I really feel like it's just, it's, it's just to the point where Kind of like how Lucasfilm is just like stamped on everything because of the involvement with special effects. It felt like ILM. At, yeah, like it felt like at this time it was just like Steven Spielberg is just involved with creature. And Anything adventure. that's coming out of yeah. Universal. Yeah. Um, that's my MSG. It's I'll take it's it. It's not great, and it doesn't go down easy, and sometimes it, it gives you indigestion. But that's, sometimes it does. That's an MSG for you. I'll take it. Yeah. I only have one last big question because we've we've already answered all. I also have just one big question. Okay, do you want to go first? Sure, sure. What on earth (laughs) is going on at the jail in Clamp Tower? (laughs) Because something has to have been cut. Because Billy gets out of jail in the morning, right? And he has a magician's bouquet. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> that he got in jail. In okay. Jail. So now that's strange. But pair right, that right, with right, the right. fact that on his way out, <laughs> he is passing a literal parade of mimes being carted in in handcuffs <laughs> into jail. What is going on? It is never addressed. It, it is, is the not. craziest it is thing. Not. It's like Clamp has like a war on like illusions. <laughs> And and I kind of get that, oh like as a God. tech guy, that he would be anti like magic <laughs> and 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 distractions. Oh but my God! Long time listeners, sketch just broke me with this it's one. So bizarre to me. Those were two <laughs> very clear decisions. He produces a magician's bouquet to give to Kate. There is a line yeah. of at least six mimes being carted out of a police van. I wish I had an answer for this one sketch, and I I just don't. Grem, anyone who worked on Gremlins, guys, if you were one of the mimes on Gremlins, oh, please write in. I was in. gonna say call. Yeah, please they'd have call to. In they'd have to write, write and they, they can't have to write. call. Yeah, in. they can't call. Yeah, the system is. Down. I would love to know. I, I mean, maybe like it was know. just a group of like criminals that their whole shtick is miming. It's possible. That's. Then what about the magician's bouquet? 
something's going on at Clamp Tower, and I don't know what it is, but it's there's a wildly more interesting than anything else in this movie. There's a song there somewhere. There, Long time listeners. There is. There is. Anyhow, I don't. I don't think we'll find it. No. No, you don't even have an MSG for me. Uh, I don't have an MSG. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, it's just uh, uh, MSG. An MSG. Perhaps there was a street performer convention okay. in town. Okay. And it got rowdy, got that, out of hand. That did not have a permit oh. to be demonstrating. Yeah. And they were all carted off to jail. Yeah. That's the that's the best maybe, MSG I can come up maybe with. Maybe they were protesting clamp technology. industries or technology because he was making it too easy for the general public to see through their tricks. It is possible. And he was ruining the magic. It is possible. And they were just protesting. Possible. And they, and they got detained. Okay. That's fair. I mean... I'll take it. I want to invent something more whimsical than that. <laughs> I have one last big question. All right. What's your last BQ for this holiday season? It's kind of dark. Oh, for the holiday season. If the evil gremlins mm -hmm. spawn yeah. from Gizmo, mm -hmm. why not just kill Gizmo? Oh, yeah. And solve the problem yeah. of gremlins. Yeah. Why did they not just kill Gizmo? Yeah, I mean, particularly the... after the second move, and I understand. I understand Gizmo is innocent in this. Yeah, it is not malicious mm -hmm. on his part. But twice now, mm -hmm. I guess there aren't, aren't mass casualties in the second movie, but a whole a lot of property damage. A lot of property damage, mm -hmm. but conservatively, a town was depopulated. Mm -hmm. They are like malicious, vicious creatures mm -hmm. that run amok. Yeah. Why not just kill Gizmo? I mean, what makes what makes Gizmo evil by association is the fact that he is so cute and endearing. Yeah. Uh, and and that he has happened to latch onto Billy, who is caring and nurturing, and so Billy will protect his life. At but, any cost. But a more practical person, yes, would. Billy breaks into a high-security lab to steal Gizmo. Yep, he does. Wasn't that hard. Once, a, 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 immediately causing mm -hmm. this second outbreak. Mm-hmm. The second outbreak is Billy's fault. The second outbreak is Billy's fault. I agree. He could have just left Gizmo. Could have just left Gizmo. That is cruel. I understand. Oh, no, it is. But, Listen, uh, it's it's just a lesser evil. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean, that is the solution. That is the solution. Unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately I don't, I don't for want Gizmo. that to be the solution, but yeah. I, I think it is. I mean, I imagine there are other Malgai out there in other corners of the world. I don't know if on there their are. And key. I don't know if there are. I'd like to think that there's like there's like a. I think a, I think it's him. I think there's like a secret society of like of like um, mystical men all across the country, and each of them has one. Okay, that's that's. I like to think that. Sure. So maybe the mimes were there. Maybe they're 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 like their foot their foot soldiers. Maybe are the mimes. Maybe this theory is coming possible. together now. Yeah, there it is, yeah. and that's now turning into a sketchy theory. Now it's turning into slowly, a but theory. it's it's getting closer. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that's just what you have to do uh, with with um, with Gizmo. Because honestly, like the alternative is you keep him in that little box. How long has he been in that box? That's pretty <sighs> cruel. That is very cruel. And he just likes to dance, and he you're not does, even letting him watch TV. He does like you to know? just dance and watch TV, like. Gizmo has uh, has a cursed existence. existence. Yeah, he does. And and there is no, I mean, all he can do is wish for sweet, sweet death. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Wish for sweet, sweet death. Yeah. I think what Merry it just comes Christmas. down to is, is is Gizmo is an analogy of the human condition. Sure. And um, we, we can only breed evil. And um, we love consumerism. Happy Life Day, everybody. There you go. There you go. And that, guys, brings us to... Is Gremlins. Yeah, Gremlins, yeah. 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 I think it's time for... Shades and Sketch Recommendations. Poor Gizmo. Oof. What a life. What a downer to end what on. What a downer. Sketch, what are you going to recommend? I should have ended on my big question. You should have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In hindsight. Yikes. Whoops. Uh, guys, I am going to yeah, recommend, uh, it's it's uh, it's holiday season, so if you're looking for any last-minute gift ideas out there, uh, not for me, although. You got plenty of options. You got plenty point. of options for me. But uh, I recently played a new board game that I really, really enjoyed, so okay. I'm going to recommend another board game. Okay. And I'm going to try to get the name right, because it's a, it's a mouthful. Quacks 
of Quidlinburg. Quacks of Quidlinburg. I'm detecting a duck theme. Yeah, you'd think. You'd think. But oh, there are like, no ducks. This is like crazy quack? It's like, like mad scientist? Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, um, it, it's loosely it's loosely themed that you're like um, part of like a Renaissance fair, and you're like a healer. You're like you're you know you're not a doctor, but you're like a, a magical healer. Quacks, yeah, of Quidlinburg. Yes, and uh, the the first the, try, long time listeners. The gameplay of of the game is that uh, you and the people you're playing against, you are making potions, and there's a nice gremlin tie in here, right? See. And uh, you have a sack of ingredients, and you have to pull them out at random. And different ingredients have different effects on your potion, aka your gameplay. And um, at the end of each round, how successful your potion was allows you to purchase more ingredients. And so your your ingredient pool that you're always choosing from from random mm. can uh, can greatly improve, and therefore you can make better and better potions. But you have to be careful because some of the ingredients are uh, just filler, and some of them are downright dangerous, and they can make your potion explode, uh, which kind of takes you out of the round. So it's kind of like a fun game of chance, but there's like a, I, I a feel certain like this, element of whimsy to it. I feel it. like this was in a Harry Potter movie. It, I mean, it does feel very much like Potions, potion mixing. Potion class. Yeah. Yeah. Um and it was just like a lot of fun. It was it was a super light game, doesn't take long to set up. Quacks. Quacks of Quidlinburg. Quidlinburg. And um Yeah, it's like not hard to, to teach. Say. It's not hard to teach. It's it's fun and light to play. It doesn't take a tremendous amount of thinking. It's it's like a lot of like gambling. Like, yeah. ooh, should I sure. pull out one more and see if I can go one more before this thing blows up in my face? Will and, uh, I get the desired art outcome? Will I create a prostitute gremlin? Yeah. Hell bent on sexual molestation. What if that was your desired outcome, though? Then it's a double win, I guess. Uh, so that's Quacks of Quidlinburg, if I'm saying it correct. But if you just type in Quacks, like it's gonna pop up? up. Yeah. Okay. Quacks of I bet Quidlinburg. Yeah. It's a fun game. I it recommend off it. The tongue. Yeah. I like saying it. It's a fun game. I am gonna recommend mm -hmm. Tremors. Oh, you ever yeah. seen Tremors? Oh, yeah, I've seen I Tremors. Love Tremors. I've seen at least a couple of them. Oh, yeah. They're, they did a series. They yeah. did a, a reboot movie. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who the actor is. Michael Michael something. I can't think of his name. Uh, he plays uh, Burt Gummer. Mm -hmm. Is the one common link. Between all the movies. All of the movies. Yeah. TV. He's been in everything. Yeah. Uh, they did a prequel where they went to the Old West. Mm -hmm. Just a fun kind of horror comedy. I think I saw that one. That been the last one I saw. Um, they're fun though. They're fun. Movies. I would love to. The do first Tremors. one has Kevin Bacon yes, in it. Yes, it does. Kind of su surprisingly, yep. uh, and Corey Feldman. Mm -hmm. Of course, in that. Corey too. Feldman is in the first. Oh, maybe it's not Corey Felt. Yeah, Corey Feldman's in the first one. Sure. And if you're wrong, we'll correct it on one. a midstream. He's either in the first or the second one. Mm -hmm. I know the kid changes, but it, Corey Feldman is in one of them. And uh, yeah, Kevin Bacon. It's just a fun. It's just a fun, ridiculous horror comedy. Yeah. Um. The the they call them graboids. Mm -hmm. the burrow underground. And uh, yeah. You Reba your... McIntyre's in the first one. Reba McIntyre is in the first one. Yeah. And uh, it's just a, just a fun time. It is fun. It's not particularly scary. I mean, to small children, kind of gave me a fright the yeah. first time I saw it. They're terrifying monsters. Yeah. But it's just fun. It is fun. Just a fun time. Yeah. And there's. Good an infinite too. supply of them. Could like gross. There are surprisingly good effects for mm -hmm. when it came out mm -hmm. and the budget that mm -hmm. I imagine that they had subsequently. Yeah. And I haven't seen it in many, many years. But they from what I remember, staple of the Sci-Fi Channel in the late nineties. Oh yeah, early I mean 2000s. that's where I saw it. Like it was yeah. on Sci-Fi all the time. I, I really feel like the series was a was a test case for making the Ash versus the Evil Dead series. Maybe, um, like. Ash vs. Evil Dead was very much in the vein of the Tremors TV series. We should do Tremors. That's I would love I to do Tremors. I, I would really like to, too. The maybe daunting thing is there's like five movies now. Uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe more. Yeah. Maybe. That'll just be like an ongoing project. We could do we'll the first three. Eventually. We could probably do the Tremors. first three. Yeah. Do it as a trilogy. Yeah. That wouldn't be bad. The Tremors trilogy. The TT. Pretty sure they went to space at one point. No, that was Critters. Never mind. Critters mm -hmm. went to space. Tremors would have a hard time getting to space. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right. So Tremors and Quacks of Quillenberg. Yeah. Those are your. Holiday recommendations. recommendations. You think you think we would do like a holiday special or like, hey, take time off from all this media and just enjoy your family? No, 
No, go watch something. Not us. That's not why you listen go to us. Go watch a, this franchise with possibly eight entries in it. Yep. And play a game that's play really game. hard to wrap your tongue around. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There you go. Quack. Kudlenberg. Uh, it's a sketch. Thanks. Thanks for potting with me today. Yeah. And Merry a, Christmas. Merry, happy Life happy Day. Happy Life Day. Happy All holidays. Of All, All of the, the holidays. holidays. Yeah. And to you also, our longtime listeners. Yes. Yeah. Whatever you celebrate, thanks for celebrating. With us. With us. Thanks for geeking out with us. Yeah. With Jade Sketch and the Geeking and, Out Band. Uh, yeah. yeah. Good job, guys. Did you like their ho- holiday album they were it's playing behind you? Priceless. They nail Silent Night. They do. Yeah. Zing That's a little pun there for you it guys. It is, yes. Yeah. Well done. Uh, if you are a fan of the show, you can uh, find us online on uh, on Twitter. You can tweet, tweet us at go with shades and sketch. And if you want to send shades some holiday messages, you can tweet him at go for shades. And if you would like to tell sketch how much you appreciate him, you can tweet him at go for sketch. Yeah. You can also find us on the Facebooks just by searching Geeking, Geeking Out, Out Sketch Shades and Sketch. You can email the show at go with Shades and Sketch at gmail.com. There you go. Mm-hmm. And you can find us on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Shades and Sketch, where we uh, occasionally uh, offer some fan exclusives, uh, some polls for properties and, and things that you would like us to tackle in mm-hmm. upcoming episodes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, exclusive content. Yep. And uh, we are very appreciative to all of our patron patrons as well as all of our longtime listeners. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And Happy, really, just thanks for thanks making for... us a part of your new holiday tradition. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the perfect way to spend the holidays. Absolutely. Yeah. Not with your family. No. This isn't always a family friendly show. Put on your your ear bowl, earbuds. Yeah. Go off somewhere by yourself. Neglect your family and friends. Yeah, you can out. See you next time. See you next time. Okay.